Ladies and gentlemen, let's discuss graphics card, shall we? We're going to start out with the RX 480, because it can be upgraded to the 580, supposedly via a BIOS flash, and then we're going to finish the video off with the main meat of this video. NVIDIA are rumoured to be preparing to launch the Volta series of graphics cards, not next year, but in Q3 of this year. However, first things first, let's go through the 400 to the 500 series. That's right, this is all doable via a BIOS update, which was first discovered on the Tech Power Up forums. So, the user in question flashed his XFX RX 480 with the BIOS of Sapphire's RX 580 Limited Edition. This increased the clock speed from 1300 MHz to 1411, which is higher than any of the 480 cards which you can buy. There are a couple of caveats before you start running off and, you know, doing just that. First thing is you could not overclock it after he did that. The second thing is, well, his card was a dual BIOS card. So, there are a couple of things to note. Firstly, if your card does not overclock to the requisite speeds, because one of the things that the 500 series has over the 400 series is refined process. In other words, they basically it's slightly more mature silicon. They are also putting more energy through it. It's about 0.01 volts compared to the previous architecture. In other words, well, I say the 400 series. And this means that you can get slightly higher clock speeds. So there are a couple of things you must immediately take into account. First things first, if you are running a reference card, in other words, you have bought one of the early reference cards, for example, my own, it's up to you whether you do this. <clears throat> because first of all, you're going to be putting more energy into the GPU, which presumably means you're going to be putting more power. But also, obviously, that only has six pins compared to the 580, which has eight pins, or with all of the custom designs, which have eight pins. Second is that there's a good chance it could reduce the lifespan of your card. And third, well, technically, if it's not a dual BIOS card, in theory, you could balk it. In other words, it would no longer be able to function. So that's kind of up to you. But that said, users are already replicating this exact feat. So there's that. If you are really hungry to overclock, well, good. You know, if you're already capable of overclocking to a considerably decent measure, and you've got a good cooler on your card, for example, a high-end um, third-party variant of a cooler. For example, once again, the XFX. Or, you're water-cooling your card. Or playing, you're just experimenting because maybe you want to buy a different graphics card. Then, this could be the way to do it. It's quite interesting, however, because obviously, since it's a BIOS, it does report the card then to be a 500 series GPU, which is not particularly surprising. It's kind of nice, though. Um... Not really surprised this could be done. I would have actually been surprised if it couldn't, but it is nice to hear confirmation. Now, here's the meat of the video. Volta. Now, Volta, just so we're all clear, there's no ambiguity whatsoever. It is, of course, the successor of, pa of Pascal, which in turn was the successor of Maxwell. So in other words, it will most likely be the 20 series, we can assume anyway. Um... Now, the early rumours were that the card would launch most likely next year. However, NVIDIA are obviously under pressure. Feel free to play the Queen song at that particular point in the video. This is probably because of Volta. Uh, I'm sorry, Vega. Now, I personally believe that Vega is going to be faster than Pascal because it's being released later than Pascal. It just makes sense. And I actually did a um, poll, a few days ago, actually, regarding your opinions on Vega versus Pascal, and your opinions pretty much match up with mine. Uh, most people assume it's going to be between, you know, 10 to 20-ish percent faster than an equivalently priced Vega GPU. <clears throat> Guess what NVIDIA do not want? Yeah, pretty obviously, they don't want in, uh, to lose their market share or for AMD to be on top and unchallenged. So the only way they can really do that is to release a new graphics card uh, architecture. Now, enough with the stalling. The rumour starts from mydrivers.com, and they believe that, um, according to them and their sources, NVIDIA will be launching <coughs> the card um, this year, once again in the third quarter. Just so we're also all clear, 
there are a couple of things we need to know. First of all, Pascal has been out for some time. But one of the reasons the 200 series is being slightly, well, has been a little bit behind is obviously you had the stack die. Um, and obviously it's also going to be an entire architecture change anyway. We, we do know, and this is thanks to a well-known leaker from Beidou, um, NVIDIA will be doing basic optimizations of the SM of the in the 200 series, but it supposedly, and obviously we don't know, this is our only rumors according to the folks over at Beidou, it is not an entire redesign. So theoretically, the difference in the architecture is not as profound as from Maxwell to Pascal. So what we can assume is it's going to have some optimizations in there. And there are going to be multiple classifications of GPU. GV100, which is going to be for Enterprise, HPC. We can assume, however, eventually there's going to be like a tie derivative. The 104, GV104. Unsurprisingly, say it with me, that's the GTX 1070 and, I'm sorry, 270 and 280. The GV2102, which supposedly is going to be the ties, although I wouldn't be surprised if, once again, the 100s also end up being like the pass... Uh, I don't know what it's going to be called, I guess the Titan XV. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, or like a Titan or a TIE 2 or something like that. And then you've got the GV110. This is pretty much the architecture names that NVIDIA have been using for some time, so it's not really that surprising. And, uh, well, frankly, one of the only major differences between these GPUs is the fact that we will see HBM2. The ambiguity with these with these GPUs is we don't know where HBM2 is going to reside. For example, is it only going to be in the high end? So, for example, the GP102 type of cards, or is it going to be the, I say, I keep saying GP, GV102 cards, or will it be in GV104 as well? Presumably, because what we know about how NVIDIA create their graphics cards, because the GV104 essentially use the same... Um, die or rather the same uh, the same chips just we've obviously cut down uh, we've cut down uh, sms we can make the assumption the memory controls would also be identical therefore in theory we can assume that if the gtx 280 sorry 2080 has the uh, hbm2 memory in theory the gtx 2070 will also have that memory but who knows I guess the real big thing here is that, well, the cards are going to be coming out. If you were to do what most people's immediate, you know, reaction would be, and that is to head over to Zuba and start scanning the shipping manifests, you would be coming up empty-handed, at least for now. <coughs> However, and let's face it, this is the most important thing, that doesn't mean much, because NVIDIA are getting really good at hiding their database entries. And we've seen that as evidence with the Titan X with a small p, which I still bloody hate their naming conventions for the Titan. But anyway, my opinion, pretty much what you'd expect. Um, are you going to buy a graphics card now? Well, in which case question is, are you willing to wait three or four months minimum to understand? The one benefit, of course, of waiting is that you will get to know what Vega versus Volta would be, but, you know, you say it could be the fourth or the third quarter, it could A, be bullshit. The other thing is it could be, like, late third quarter, or maybe even essentially the fourth quarter. Who knows? You might see this in, like, September, October. If that happens, would you really be willing to wait, you know, for your graphics card until that point? And it's up to you. The last thing I'll leave you with, and this is possibly the most important out of all of them, is really with graphics cards, there is no right time to buy. There is kind of, like, if a graphics card's just essentially just a couple of weeks away, and we all know that, then obviously that's the right time to buy. But if it's like six months, possibly, then probably not. Um, as for how this card is going to stack up against, well, you know, Vega. Well, that's going to be the interesting one, isn't it? I guess we'll see. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.